43 seconds of glow goes. Sci-fi movie opens by panning down from a shot of the stars cliche. We won't play it, but the movie opens with Give Me Some Lovin' by the Spencer Davis Group, which I think is one of the best songs of all time. But given the gratuitous use of jets in this movie, it also seems like a cheap attempt to capitalize on the success of 1986's Iron Eagle. Movie begins by smugly calling me ignorant, and to add injury to insult, does it by making me read. Also, this may have been true if you just displayed both lines at the same time, but since you told me time travel exists before you told me I didn't know it yet, I actually knew it existed prior to the accusation of me not knowing it exists. Yeah, but you know that I know that, so one of us doesn't know something else, right? Allow me to follow this logic here. So, because she knows that you know something means that either you or her don't know something different than the things you know? Did I get this finely crafted piece of conversational logic correct? But wouldn't it be safe to assume everyone has something different they don't know, even if they didn't know that you knew the original thing that you knew? Movie thinks that technology in 2050 will require all this switch-flicking, knob-squeaking foreplay just to get it started. How do I know this is wrong, you ask? Well, you don't know it yet, but time travel exists. Also, I saw similar rocker switches on a boat in 2022, and I'm pretty sure it was from the past. Who talks like that? Did you order, like, a bully starter kit on Amazon or something? So we've got baby Ryan Reynolds and actual Ryan Reynolds in this movie, and I'd just like to go ahead and add ten sins for both of them being so excellent at cinema sins. This entire film will try to get away with things by snarking itself to death, and we just can't allow that absolution. It's barely been a year since we lost his father. Remember, you spell it Principal because they are your pal you use at the beginning of your movie to sneak in some forced X. Position. At least I think that's how the mnemonic device goes. You better start caring because the future is coming. This foreshadowing is heavy-handed, even for a movie that opened with time travel exists. The stupus will just leave his ball glove out in the yard unprotected from the elements and then not close the door when he comes inside. And you wonder why we have so many kids since. Can we please stop saying date now? Kid is killing his Ryan Reynolds impression. But the problem with roles like this, where the younger actor mimics the older one, is that it makes it seem like personalities are constant throughout life, as opposed to something we develop over time. And I'd like to think it took more than just a few years of bullying to turn Reynolds into a sarcasm hole. No ovens, no answering the door, no video games. This is just a setup so we can immediately cut to this little prick playing video games, but honestly, what kind of parent tells a middle school age kid no video games in 2022? This is just a recipe for all sorts of internet rabbit holes that lead to your child either becoming a porn addict, a racist, or even a YouTuber. Let the boy play video games, for God's sake! Also, showing this as a precursor to Adam becoming a pilot makes a good point that some video games can help you learn certain skills. I, on the other hand, am what you get when your mom and dad think Nintendo is the devil's Sudoku, and movies are a safer bet. Continuing to walk into a forest that appears to be raining fire. I'm not trying to start a conspiracy theory or anything, but have you ever noticed that kids in movies have a much higher percentage chance of having asthma than kids in the real world? Is it something in the LA water? There has to be another explanation other than it's a cheap and easy shortcut to tension and easy character development. Doesn't there? Hey, don't don't call anyone, okay? Put the phone, I'm not gonna hurt you. The fact that the movie doesn't end right here means that Ellie is a terrible parent. Even at 12, this kid should know that finding someone in your home with a gunshot wound is an immediate call to the police situation, and not a wait and see if it's your older self who has traveled back in time on a mission to save his wife and restore continuity to the timeline situation. And the director said, hey Ryan, when you open the fridge, first thing, grab an apple? Yeah, I've played sarcastic assholes my whole life. I know how to choose the right fruit. Boy, you were shot? Yeah, no, actually, no, no. I was stabbed with a bullet. What do you think, you moron? Adam the Old thinks taking his younger self's question, which was obviously based on the surprise of seeing his first gunshot wound out of context, makes him clever. Who even does that? Seriously. What's with the lightsaber? It's not a lightsaber. Thinking if you say it enough, Disney won't sue you. Fucking zip it! No one calls Jinx. How do you know my dog's name? Because I named him. Why tell him who you are at all, though? What purpose does it serve other than getting him more worked up than he already is? And even if you were going to tell him, why wait until now? I mean, other than the obvious reason that you wanted to string the audience along, who, by the way, have known what was going on here from the beginning anyway. You're me. Holy shit. That's classified. But yes. Is Ryan not at all concerned about changing history at this point? If he's studied as Doc Brown, he's got to be a little bit nervous right now, right? Because I'm injured. Ah, <sighs> the jet won't even clear me to fly, which means I can't even get in there to fix her. Well, that makes no f***ing sense unless your goal is to strand in the past every pilot that gets hurt on the job. But then again, why does time travel require planes to begin with? Oh yeah, because the story. I can't even get in there to fix her. Gendering your jets. But guess who can? So your fancy future technology can tell you're injured when reading your DNA, but not that you were all of a sudden 12 years old? Not securing your body while riding a wobbly hoverboard 50 feet into the air with the child version of yourself. 
He found the perfect number and size of trees to prop up this plane and keep it perfectly level. I'm going to go out on a limb and say trees don't work like this. I don't know what that is, but when is a flashing red light ever good? Well, when my air fryer has finished reheating my waffle fries, just for one example. Also, the red flashing light quite obviously says critical damage detected. And those are three words I would hope someone knows before flying a normal plane, never mind a time plane. Also, also, the second exclamation point after detected is just redundant overkill. It's a the sin is that the movie has to provide this answer because we've all been programmed to ask the question. My God, we watched too many movies. Thinking you can watch too many movies. Okay, the prevailing wisdom is that when I go back to my fixed time, my memory, our memories, they reform, they reconcile. Okay, thanks. We will keep all that in mind. But quick question. What if you change something not related to your memories? You know, the whole butterfly thing? What if you make a decision that radically alters a future in a way that can't be reconciled? And more importantly, what happens when more than one person is jumping through time? Does your mind reconcile their changes, too? My point is, as always, time travel movies suck! I'm kidding! I'm kidding! I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. Ricky Gervais! What the hell is wrong with you, future? Are you trying to make pictures worse? I'm sure we are all hoping for a day when technology will allow us to see our pictures washed out with a constant blue shading, and with everything behind the transparent display mixed into them, a literal Polaroid from the 1960s is more advanced than this shit. You have a wonderful mouth mullet, and you must be very proud. Nothing about this says party. Not the front, not the back, and not the side to side. In all the ways that matter, this is not a mullet. Shouldn't you be at work? Yeah, I need to pay the insurance on the house today. Holy sh**, is that a legitimate excuse for missing work? Sorry boss, can't come in today, got a bill due and it takes me hours to figure that shit out. You know how it is. I'm taking all my bills off auto pay and never going into TJ Maxx again. Tearing the top of your cereal box. This is not difficult, people. Just slide a finger under there and slowly move it around, searching for the key spot, then gently nudge it toward release until... I'm sorry, what were we talking about again? She wakes up every morning with a broken heart and a, and a, and a closet full of his... Sarcastic scoop. What's up, Reed? Well... Look who we have here. These bullies bully so hard, they literally saw him standing there and decided to do an end-around trap maneuver on his ass. Not only that, somehow the guy on the skateboard knew exactly when his friend on the other side of the building was in place with no line of sight. These are like Bully Hall of Fame moves right here. I'm gonna smoke your banana, mother. No, 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 no. This distraction leads Discount Ryan Reynolds to getting his ass beat, which was apparently the plan all along. You don't go from being you to being me without getting your ass kicked. Because of some sort of getting beat up builds character cliche. Are you peeing right now? <laughs> You're a real streamer. Except that when he runs away, his pants are dry. You have a wife? No, we do not have a wife anymore. Gee, spoilers, man. Adam is like the guy that accidentally lets it slip that Matt Damon is in Interstellar and then is like, Well, cat's out of the bag. Here are all the other plot details, too. What do you know about time dilation? I wish I knew what I was doing wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. Jennifer Garner is so good in this scene, and the conversation about moms and sons is so incredibly touching that I kind of have to sin the fact that the movie doesn't spend more time with her and less time with the timey-wimey nonsense. Boys always come back for their mamas. Says the man that traveled back in time specifically to save his wife and never once mentions what his future mom is up to. My husband had a jacket just like that. And your son had a younger face just like that, but sure, notice the jacket. Locked and docked. I know docking, and I see no docking. I also don't see no locking or popping for that matter, but I'm mostly concerned with the docking. These two engage in synchronized eating, as if we all put food on our forks the same way every time, eat in a rhythm that will never change for the rest of our lives, and wouldn't immediately stop eating if we witnessed this happening. Shit. I change my stride if I accidentally find myself walking in lockstep with another person. I offered to walk her to the right one and... Man, I was all in before we even made it outside. Gross. Why do these guys reappear before kicking in the door? If you've got invisible technology, you never turn that shit off. And don't tell me they can't be invisible when touching objects because the next guy that appears is already in the house. And don't tell me they are just transporting in from a different place or time because clearly Hawking was barking at them before they appeared and if they could just teleport in, why would they have to kick the door down? <laughs> Helmet punching. Not the euphemism, no shame there. Just actual punching of helmets. That's a lightsaber, dude. Young Adam would be Ryan Reynolds at Cinema Sins. <laughs> With Deus Ex Machina. But also, Laura's entrance at this moment was all the unexpected amounts of badassery I needed to kick off this fun action sequence. So fine, go back in time and take back a sin. Hey. Hi. That was awesome. I'll admit, it looked cool, but when you start to think of what had to happen for that single norm trooper to appear directly between you and them, and then just stand there for a few beats until Laura shot him, with the extreme likelihood that Laura knew you were standing there, it becomes a little less awesome, and a little more convenient dumb bad guy plus child endangerment some. Don't look back. Look up. 
because a ship is at this very moment going to appear out of thin air to make my point. Being able to avoid a top-of-the-line future missile guidance system by swerving real fast. Anyone who's ever driven off-road thinks this looks fake as shit right now, simply because of how fast they're going and how smooth the ride is. Alright, this will be the last I mention it, but with whatever invisible teleportation time jump technologies these guys can appear from, why did this ship give itself away instead of just sending these guys down to car level, surrounding the vehicle, and having them all appear at once and immediately start shooting? Technology is the tool. Use it before it uses you, bad guy army dudes. Unless someone went back and altered the time stream so the future the jet had left from had already been changed. Just say time travel is a get-out-of-plot-jail-free card and be done with it. I don't have time for these circular, logic-defying paradoxes. Just pretend we've traveled ahead in time enough that I've already explained why this explanation is bullshit thoroughly and added a hundred cents for it. Cute kid. Precious. Isn't he? Don't you just want to hold him underwater till the bubbles stop? <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, I love you very much. May the sin removal be a token of our bond forever. I found you. Well, technically you found him, but potato, potato, tomato, to movies always be centering around the male ego. Now you have to go back to 2018 and you have to put things right. But if he goes back another four years, then how does that, you know, I already added a hundred cents for this shit, so I wouldn't need to do this anymore. Apologies. He's an extra sin for me piling on that I'm giving to this movie. Even if we correct the time stream, somewhere in us will be the echo of this one. Oh. I've had years to rig my defenses. After all those years, her defenses amount to one trap in the middle of the road. We can fix this. The way this audio feels like it was recorded at a different place in time? Please do. Thanks to John Wick, having a weapon stash this big but only using one is the action movie equivalent of leaving the scene after barely touching your food. Boom. This is on the level of making whooshing noises while running fast, pew pews when firing your blaster, and <laughs> when you deploy your lightsaber. Zoe, let the Foley artists do their job. So, is she insta-killing these fools with a single bullet through their body armor? Like, no bleed out, just dead? Or are they disappearing because some all-knowing mysterious Time Force Keeper is just pushing the fast-forward button anytime one of them is injured? Either way, that's some bullshit. College is a high point. Until after a year, you lose your scholarship for something that is so unbelievably stupid, I cannot even say it out loud right now. College. You end up in the Air Force. Turns out you could really fly. I understand that he's trying to give a quick summary of his life, and most of it does sound not good, but including this among a list of negatives shifts the tone back to cool in a way I don't believe was intended. The Adams family just flew off into the sunset with a big head start, but somehow Sorian had time to dramatically kill Laura, pick up Christos, switch seats, fly the Quinjet past Adam's jet, and turn around to fly back straight at them? Ah, f it's a time machine! Well, the movie never confirmed or denied the use of time travel during this pursuit, so the sin still stands. There's a big dramatic swell in the music right now, and not Blue Natiri is about to die. And I think the movie wants us to... care? We've known her for literally 15 minutes, and the movie has established nothing is permanent or matters, so... no. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! There's something about G-forces that tells me both of them should have been killed in this maneuver, and something about seatbelts that tells me young Adam should have been killed multiple times in this jet chase. The reactor's damaged. You have one jump left. The problem with movies trying to raise the stakes by saying there is only one more chance of success is that it also immediately raises the chances of success to 99%. Movie waits almost an entire hour to Mark Ruffalo. Adam? Oh, sure, the dad figures it out immediately. This makes Mom not recognizing him earlier even more infuriating, because now we know the movie is aware that parents would recognize their adult children. Is... is this time travel? Mark Ruffalo invents time travel in a movie cliché. The Adam Project. Roll credits. You know the potential for catastrophic changes to the time stream. It's true, sometimes when you try to reverse that time stream, or de-age it if you will, it creates an uncanny valley. You made yourself hate him. Because it was easier than missing him. I love how in movies, 12-year-olds are like genius psychologists who know the exact right thing to say instead of hormone-ruled mush brains that can't even remember to close a door or turn off a light. Guess what I'm trying to say is... Kids! Adam, make sure you feed Hawking before you leave for school, honey! So wait, 8-year-old Adam was ready for school early enough to be playing video games while his dad makes an omelet? And here I thought the time travel was what made this a fantasy world. The oh. eggs are burnt and the bacon's oh. still somehow oh, totally no, raw. No. Movie thinks that just because this guy invented time travel, he also has to be a genius that can't manage simple tasks like cooking eggs. God forbid Lewis be smart and able to feed himself. When a bad idea is the only idea, it becomes a great idea. Serving on a committee. Don't get me wrong, your outfits are incredible though. They're intimidating, but also scream, please don't hurt me. That's funny. I thought they screamed, we're a faceless horde, to make it easier for the audience to accept you mass murdering us. 
Adam is definitely handling the business end of this weapon and is somehow not vaporized. That thing has a shield function and you're just using it now? I am not being critical. I'm, I'm narrating. Narration. What happens if you pull it out? About 22% of the time? Pregnancy. If I shoot him, you die too. This has literally not been established by any conversation or practical example in this entire movie. But sure, let's just throw it in the why not bucket. Might come in handy later if you need an easy out for the finale. Electromagnetic seal compromised. Adam's father called him a condom with buttons earlier. Now we have a catastrophe caused by a seal being compromised. If we take into account all the talk of wormholes, maybe the henchmen they killed earlier are like sperm trying to reach the time ovum and Adam is like a temporal spermicide. You know what, I'm beginning to think the entire movie is a metaphor about contraception. One of my favorite little-known facts about magnets is how clever they are about what metal they attract and when. Very cinematic little buggers, those magnets. Five minutes of nonsense that no one in this room should have survived. What is going on in the place where young Adam's face should be? If the writers want to introduce sleight of hand as a character trait all of a sudden, that's fine. But having them go full David Blaine and act as if the weapon was in his pocket the entire time is just nonsense. Immediately knowing how to do a force-propelled glow stick launch into a three-point landing the very first time you hold the immaculate rod of blinky lights. One minute, you can do it until lockdown. It's not a real action movie until you throw a forced and surprisingly well-updated countdown into the finale. <laughs> that bullet went forward a few feet and then did a balletic 270-degree turn and then continued straight again towards the magnet. I'm not saying the magnet couldn't pull a bullet through someone, but I am saying it wouldn't do it like that and certainly would have already been pulling it from inside the gun. I figured after we eliminated time travel, you two would go back to your fixed times. Well, it probably takes a while for 30 years to change time to sort itself out. Let me guess, the exact amount of time it takes to wrap up a few emotional beats? I guess the movie needs its convenient temporal field of dreams ending, despite the fact that the effect of young Sorin's death happened instantaneously. Mark Ruffalo has to watch the people he loves get blipped out of existence in a movie cliche. I'm Adam. Adam. Adam Reed. Laura Shane. Oh, right. Laura Shane. I think I remember something about... Wasn't she the... Look, I have a vague recollection of spending about 14 minutes and 44 seconds with a character named Laura about 40 minutes ago, but blissfully my new fixed timeline memories are reconciling to a world where I never watched this movie in the first place, so... Skip! Cause you're grown up and you're grown up and you're grown up! I know you want to touch all the pretty buttons with your sticky little child fingers. Disappointing you is like choking the little mermaid with a bite chain. What? I just... you're... kinda ripped. Oh! I'm thin! I'm thin! Look at my cheekbones! But if you go near Adam again, I'll know. And I will find you, Ray. And I will kill you. You wanna see something cool? A sonic probe! You wanna see something cool? That's a lightsaber, dude. Yes! That's a lightsaber, dude. We have to get off this road fast. What road? Roads? Where well, we're going, we don't need roads. I don't know why everyone believes that, but that isn't true. Think about it. If you travel to the past, that past becomes your future. And your former present becomes the past, which can't now be changed by your new future. Then you say or do... It can be used... Um, what's the next part? As a flotation device. As a flotation device. We're talking about your penis. You are technically correct. The best kind of correct. But without the algorithm, no one will ever be able to program it again. Or? The destruction might in fact be very localized, limited to merely our own galaxy. Finish him! There's gotta be something we can do. You wanna have a catch? I'll, uh, I'll be quiet. I'll be peace.